Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly, weekly contest 356. Uh, it's a higher level problem and yeah, a, a very standard one. If you are aware of digit DP, uh, then it will be relatively easy for you to solve it. Otherwise, yes, you can go through some, uh, you know, resources of what is digit DP. By the way, I'll introduce you what is digit DP and how you solve it. I'll, I'll tell you the approach in this video. So yes, let's see how to approach this problem after reading the problem statement and how to get to that solution, right? That's more important. So yeah, the problem name is count stepping numbers in a range. Okay. So there are two positive integers, low and high represented as strings because there are very large numbers, right? Find the count of stepping numbers in the inclusive range low to high. A stepping number is an integer such that all of its adjacent digits have an absolute difference of exactly one. Return an integer denoting the count of stepping numbers in the inclusive range low to high. Okay. Since the answer may be very large, return it modulo 10 raised to power 9 plus 7. A stepping number should not have any leading zero. Remember, this condition is very important reason being because of this will modify our solution okay so the problem statement is very simple it says that there are two numbers low and high and what we have to do we have to tell the number of stepping numbers in this range right now the numbers can be very large this low and this high can be up to 10 raised to power 100 that is why that is why these two numbers are given in string format okay so we have to tell the number of stepping numbers between two these in this range and what is a stepping number a stepping number is a number where if you consider any two adjacent digits in that number the absolute difference should be one okay like for example 123 230 231 right absolute difference one absolute difference one great absolute difference one absolute difference two this is not valid getting it absolute difference has to be one maybe this digit is small this is large or vice versa but overall the absolute difference has to be one right so this is what we have to do right now just see the range is pretty large the num the the number that you will be given can be can go up to 100 digits okay so that is why they have given you this in the string format just see 100 length uh, low and high consist of only digits low and i don't have any leading zero so the given numbers are valid okay now Whenever you see this, this type of problem, forget about DP and all, forget about this. Whenever you are given this type of problem that you have to find something in a range. Like for example, I have to find some valid numbers in a range from this, right? In this range, let's call it L, let's call it R. So there, writing a function, if it is easy to solve, it is if, if so I have to calculate a value. Suppose I have to find number of valid numbers in this range, right? I don't know. Any, any definition could be uh, like any number can be valid depends on the problem. But if it is easy to find the number of valid numbers from 0 to R or 1 to R, then what we should do? We should generally, this is the range, right? This is L, this is R. I have to find number of valid numbers. So what you should do? You should find the number of valid numbers from 0 to R. You should find the number of valid numbers from 0 to L. Just subtract them. Okay, just subtract them. So what you will get, you will get the number of valid numbers from L plus one to R. Okay, now you just have to check for one extra number that is L that is it valid or not. So you can write a utility function or you can check it separately. But overall, this is the approach that you find it from zero to R and, and again zero to L and then subtract it. So you get from L plus one to R and just check separately for L. Okay, and add it. If it's valid, add, increment your answer or do not change your answer, right? This is the main approach, right? This is how you solve it. Step one. Now comes the question. How do I know that how many numbers are valid from zero to R? How do I know that, right? So for that, just see, in worst case, I can have 100 positions, right? I can have 100 positions because the numbers are of 100 digits, right? I can have 100 positions. So what I'll do, let's call it index 0, index 1, index 2, dot, dot, dot. Uh, index 100 just taking an example index 99 whatever you call it okay for simplicity i'm taking some random examples right now what i'll do i will try to place different digits at every position right at every position i'll just try to place different digits such that the number i have formed it till now is valid let's take an example suppose the upper bound is suppose the upper bound is uh one two three six i have to find the number of valid numbers till 1, 2, 3, 6, right? What I can do? I have four positions, right? 
I have four positions. So one digit number can also be valid. Two digit can also be valid. Three digit can also be valid. But for four digit numbers, this is the maximum number I have to consider. I cannot consider one, two, three, seven. Getting it? So this is the upper bound, right? So now what we do? What we do here is, <coughs> sorry, we start placing digits here, right? We start placing digits here. Now since till here we are just forming one digit number, what we will do? We will try to place all the numbers from 0 to 9, right? All the numbers. Now we go to position 1. Again, if I talk about position 1, uh, position one, so this is position 0, position 1. If I talk about two digits number, then also I can place all the, all the numbers here from 0 to 99, right? So the maximum number that will be formed using these two digits is 99 and that is obviously less than this, right? I go to the third position. Again, I, my upper bound is four digit number and I'm standing at the third digit, right? So again, I can place zero to nine, getting all the possible digits. So nine, nine, nine is the maximum possible answer. Now I go to fourth position. Now when I go to fourth position, then just see what is the maximum digit I can place, right? Now we have to see what is the maximum digit I can place. Now suppose one, two, three, four, whatever are the digits here, suppose you had a four here, right? You had a four here. So can we place any digit here? 0 to 9 can we place no right because whatever are the digits here like except 0 right except 0 I'm, I'm not considering 0 right now let's make things simple we handle the case of 0 separately suppose it uh, here it is 1 here it is 2 something like this right so if you have a 4 here then you cannot place any digit here because even if you place 0 this number becomes greater than the given upper bound right what I mean to say when you come to the fourth position you see that do I have an upper limit? Do I have an upper limit for this position? Like for these positions, I was not having any upper limit, right? So I, I was trying to place all the digits 0 to 9, 0 to 9. But when I go to the last position, I see that is my bound tight. Tight bound is mean that, okay, you are restricted to use these digits, right? Let's take another example, 2, 3, 6, 8, right? Now at this position, you are restricted to use only digits from 0 to 8. You cannot use digit 0 to 9. I mean, you cannot di use digit 9, right? So this is an extra information that I'll pass, right? This is an extra information. So this is how I'll try to generate the digits. I'll go to each and every position. I'll see what are the valid numbers that I can place here. I'll check for all the possibilities. Simple. This is the first thing. Now, the question also says a, a number is valid only when the adjacent digits have an absolute difference of 1, right? Like, for example, this and this. They should have an absolute difference of 1. So while placing the digit, Suppose I am at this position and this position. I will just see what was the digit I placed here, right? So I will only place uh, the digits which are valid. For example, if I place two here, so what I can place here, I can either place one, I can place three. I cannot place four because if I place four here, the absolute difference between two and four becomes two. I want the absolute difference to be one, right? So just by using these two conditions, we will be able to solve it, right? I've, I've explained you uh, this with a I've given you 10,000 feet overview of how these things happen. This is known as digit DP. Digit DP means at every particular position, you are trying to place all the possibilities. Now, the extra thing you pass here is that for the current position, am I restricted to use the digits or I, I am free to use all the digits? That's the only thing, right? A hi-fi term, but overall conceptually it is simple, right? This is one thing. Now, one last thing I want to say is, <laughs> sorry there was one extra thing a stepping number should not have leading zeros right so that means a number zero if i talk about a number zero then this number zero is not a stepping number and we are trying to generate numbers from zero to a particular range let's call it h right so i have to take care of this zero separately so instead of making it complex what we are doing we are just passing a variable that am i in a position that i've only placed zeros till the current position simple because if I place, for, suppose for an n digit number, if all the digits are zero, that means the number itself is zero, right? Or rather, I would say whatever numbers you are forming, it should not have leading zeros. For, so for that, what we have done, we have just taken an extra variable that will become more clear once I explain you the code, right? But overall, this is how you solve digit DP questions. In fact, there was a, I would say uh, some contest back, there was a problem, the problem name was count of integers. In that video also, I discussed what was digit DP. That was an easier problem. You can also refer that, okay? Um, you can just Google it, right? Whatever, whatever you want. But any resources related to digit DP will be very helpful, right? Let's see how the code works, and this will become crystal clear, right? 
this is the main function I have. These are the two numbers I have, right? In a string format, because the numbers are large. Reset array. Why I have created a separate function? Because <coughs> here what, what is happening? We are generating the same possibilities multiple times. So we'll memoize it, right? Basic dynamic programming concept, right? So I'll not go into that detail. So here I have a four dimension array. So I want to set all the values with minus one. This will help me in identifying that whether or not I have calculated the value for this index, right? For this possibility. Getting it? So that is what I am doing. Four dimension DP. So I goes from 0 to 101, 0 to 11, 0 to 2, and then you set all of them to minus one. Simple. So instead of writing it twice, I just created a function, right? Reset array. And now solve it. Calculate the number of stepping numbers for this range, 0 to high, all right? The current index is zero. That means I am trying to place a number at zeroth index. What is minus one? So to check whether, to check what are the valid digits for the current position, I have to see what was the previous digit as well, right? So when I want to place the first digit, I have taken the previous digit as minus one. Otherwise, what we will do? If I am at this position, my I'll pass the information that, okay, this was the digit I placed here. So when I am placing a new digit at the i position, I'll see that. I only place digits such that their absolute difference is one, right? So these are the information number, <laughs> number, index, what's the previous number? This is true that are you restricted to use? Um, are you restricted with the limit? And the last one is, are we placing only zeros till now? Simple. These are the only things, right? Now let's go to this function, you know, to understand it in a better way. Number, current index, previous digit, tight and is zero. Okay. Forget about this, forget about this, come to this. I'll go to these base conditions, but let's come to the core logic first, okay? Limit. Limit tells me what's the maximum digit I can place at the ith index. What's the current index? This, right? So it will be whatever digit I have. That means one, two, three, six. So at this particular position, I can only place numbers till six, right? At this particular position, I can place only numbers till three. That is what I'm taking. That is what I'm considering. But if the current position is not restricted, like for example, this is not restricted, this is not restricted, this is not restricted. So if the current position is not tight, then limit is equals to nine. That means try to place all the nine, uh, 10 digits at this particular position, right? Remember, I start with true because, why I start with true? Because suppose at this particular position, at the first position and the, and the last position, you know, I should take care that I don't, I do not place any invalid digit. What do I mean by this? Here, one, two, three, six is there. Now I cannot place a, I cannot create a four digit number starting with two, right? So that is why this is restricted, right? This value will change, but ultimately you start with a restricted mode. Okay. So limit is equals to whatever digit you have. If you are not restricted, limit becomes nine. Okay. Now answer is equals to zero. <coughs> Sorry. Let's try to place all the digits. Current digit equals to zero. Current digit goes to limit. Current digit plus plus. Right. Now. I have to call a recursive function. I have to try, I have to, um, I should try to generate all the other possibilities, right? So what's the next value of tight? So just see, if you are restricted for the current position, okay, if you are restricted for the current position and the current digit equals to limit, simple. That means if I am talking about the current position and this was restricted, okay? And also I am placing the last possible digit here means if this was restricted and I can, the maximum value I can place here is six. So if I'm placing one here, this is not restricted Two not restricted three, not restricted. But when you place six here, it is restricted. So these are the two conditions. If it is restricted and the, I'm placing the last possibility, then the new position will also be restricted. That means the next iteration that I'm going to call, right? Now, what was next zero? Next zero was, am I placing all the zeros till now? So if I have placed all the positions that I have taken till now are zeros, and the current position is also zero. The current digit that I'm placing is also zero. Then the next zero will be true. Simple. Okay. Now let's see when I'll call that function. I'll call that function when is zero is true because I have to try to generate all the possibilities, right? Also the absolute difference between the current digit and the previous digit is equals to one. Simple. Current digit and previous digit. Previous digit is, digit is something that is already coming to me. Current digit is just something that I'm placing. Okay answer plus equals to solve this is the string now try to place a number at current index plus one the current digit is uh, what i'm placing next right i have calculated next zero i've calculated just take the mod simple 
right this is the core logic now why i have added these two conditions this is the base condition right this is the base condition when you reach the last index that means you have gone beyond the last index suppose the length of the string is four uh, okay and you have placed that all the possibilities still four digits what do you do if if you have placed all the zeros then you do not get any possibilities right a number starting with zeros uh, or, or, or uh, and zero is not a valid number right that we have already seen so you return zero else you return one simple okay if i have seen uh, all the zeros till now zero 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 return zero possibility else return one possibility simple now what we do what we do we have to calculate answer for this combination current index previous digit why i've added plus one just see here because i start with minus one uh, where is it yeah i start with minus one so i cannot have negative index right so that's why i've done previous digit plus one is zero is tight these are boolean variables so i have tried to convert into integers right if this value is already calculated if it is not equals to minus one return it right and if it is not uh, if it is calculated return it if it is not calculated do all this stuff store it in the array dp array and then return it simple memoizing what we have just done right so this is what we do again the core concept of digit dp is <coughs> are am i restricted or not what's the previous digit and i try to place all the num all the digits here right by limit right what's my upper bound now it tells me what are the valid numbers from zero to high i reset the array again because i again need to make all of them minus one i again call the function this tells me from zero to low remember this is minus right because zero to high is this zero to low is this you subtract it right so you get this so what do you have got, uh, got low plus one say high you have got now i just need to check for low that is low my answer or not right because i have answer from low plus one to high check for low as well okay now some of you may argue why not directly calculate answer from zero to high and subtract zero to low minus one yes that is also one of the possibilities but low is a string right subtracting one from a string is cumbersome to code so this is an easier way right so answer plus is mod so that it doesn't overflow now just see is low valid so i'm just checking adjacent indices just see i goes from one to length if the absolute difference between the current character and the previous character of low is not equals to minus one that means no this is not a valid number so is low valid becomes false you break the loop now, now answer equals to answer plus mod plus is low valid if if, if low is valid add one L, else add zero and just take the mod and return the answer now some of you can again argue i have taken a mod here why am i taking mod here again this is because this is because if the value is one here to again write a separate if if condition or to again write a separate mod i have written it in both the in, in the same land right i mean to say if low valid is zero then yes i do not need to take the mod but if low valid is one there is a con there, there may there may be a chance that i need to take the mod so i've just combined both the conditions that's it okay just to write the code simple uh, that's why i've done it right so this is what is digit dp i have attached the solution link the accepted my accepted solutions link in the description if you want you can just, just go through that play around with it if you want to practice uh, you know what uh, what do you call it easier problems uh, there is a problem name as count integers or count of integers that recently came in a lead code contest you can just try that if you face issues with that solution as well i have already created a video for that as well right just go through that let me know if you face any issues related to any of those two solutions okay and i'll be more than happy to help you okay so mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them okay so yeah thank you thank you take care bye bye